Alright guys, sorry I'm running late today. It happens sometimes. How is everybody today? Everybody's weekend's going all right. So we are needle felting along with Bob Ross tutorial, and um, the link to the tutorial in full, if I could click on the chat before I start typing, that would be great. Thank you, Mubot, can be found there. Uh, just on the Bob Ross YouTube channel is where we're pulling that from today. And um, we're on Season 3, Episode 6, Covered Bridge. And uh, we're going to get started here. So when we last left off, we were working on the shadows of our background trees and stuff here. And uh, they didn't have to be super, super tight and thick, but you know, we needed some sort of coverage happening back here of some description. Just to kind of frame out the um, background trees that we can kind of see through this clearing out there on in the back or I guess on the side of the hill maybe so that's what we're gonna keep working on here And if you want to go back and see the other couple of episodes or sessions that we've done on this one in particular or any of the ones in this season because we've done all of them up to season <coughs> we've done all of them up to episode 6 excuse me in this season Sorry, I think my allergy situation was starting to turn into a head cold situation based on how I've been feeling for the past day or two. But I'm just gonna try to push through and get some stuff done here. So a little bit of the background sky color poking in is fine. It kind of gives the feel of like natural spaces in between the trees back there, so that's okay. Now, um, traditionally for needle felting, people will go with roving. Um, I am using a combination of um, roving sometimes, depending on how much roving I have and if I have it in the color I need. But um, I'm primarily using acrylic yarn. And, um, you know, just 
just the one you'd buy at the craft store, the, the balls, and, uh, you know, you're like, well, wait a minute, that doesn't look like acrylic yarn, or yarn in general. Um, it's because you have to do a little bit of prep work with it. To get it to where you can do it with this. I mean, you might be able to use it unprepped, but you'd really only be like doing um, probably line work with it, I would imagine. That would be interesting to see. I wonder if that would work. Get like some really, really fine, thin black baby yarn maybe and then like sketch out like a stained glass looking piece that might be fun to try that could have potential pulling this up off of my mat every so often because I found when I don't I end up felting it to the mat and uh, it's not a fun time trying to pull it off if I let it go for a while and then the whole thing gets distorted from me trying to rip it up off the mat even being as gentle as possible still gets a bit misshapen I try to remember to pull that up every so often. Now it takes us a few weeks to get through each tutorial because paint is a much faster um, medium to work with than this. So if you're looking for more immediate gratification, or satisfaction maybe from a piece being finished faster, then you might want to stick with the paint. Or maybe attempt to follow along with Bob with acrylic. instead of oil, because oils can take months to dry, or to cure, whatever they, the terminology they use for it. Do I need to get him? I'm just asking. Oh, I forgot to put up our reference. So um, a couple of weeks ago we had done some uh, test sketches on a couple of his tutorials that we're going to attempt to follow coming up. So we are following episode 6 of this season. Uh, it is called Cupboard Bridge. So we are going to try to getting this figured out here and kind of put in. I was trying to leave a little extra of our sky color poking through. I mean we went to all that trouble to uh, put that in place.
so that's a bigger um, break in the fluff than we really want for that. So um, we're gonna stretch out some more fluff. We'll, we'll be covering that up. That's a little too big of an airy spot there, but you know, it happens. Fluff does what it wants to do, and I didn't have that solid of a piece in there. So we will... Okay. Trying to figure out what that tapping was. It's my headphone wire tapping our placemat that we have down here. This one's pretty beat up. Next time I'm in Dollar Tree, I'll have to see if they have any different ones. just kind of make one, but I don't want it to get destroyed. So that's kind of what would happen eventually. best as we can. happening in this point in the tutorial in the lower right hand corner and by what I kind of did in our sketch kind of need to start putting in our tree trunk here at least the area where our tree trunk would be. Now that we might need to Yeah. 
we'll start to fill this in. down the back there just to help it lay a little bit flatter. It's not going to lay super flat because my pad has seen better days, but I'll, um, I'll take this messed up pad than, uh, than dealing with the scritch of the foam pads. constantly, so the little bit that um, I was needle felting into styrofoam and stuff when we were working on the gingerbread project, um, that, that was a lot. That was a lot for my ears, so um, I kind of figured it would be, but uh, not a tremendously huge fan of that. This is a, a lot softer of a crunch working on this pad than it is on the, um, the foam. Now I know some people use like brush mats and those might be fun. I just haven't tried the brush mats and I don't believe I've seen one big enough for the stuff that I do. So from what I saw from my options, it was probably going to be the, the wool mat or the um, Or the foam to um, have one big enough, you know. So, into here. <laughs> Sorry, drinking some tea. Just gonna kind of work on getting our base put in here. We got an R horizon line. Now that is gonna come down a little bit. Um, it does bring it down a little bit further from where we're at.
We will have to think about that. Um, I know we we're not completely covering the purple in this section. We will be. Uh, we're going to be coming back. This is going to be coming down just a little bit further for the time being. And I might have to advance the tutorial a little bit further than we're necessarily going to work in a particular session. Um, mostly because I need to see what his next few steps are. Because sometimes it's easier to just go to where he's at or work towards where he's trying to get um, with the right colors. Because uh, paint, you know, you can slosh the paint around, you can scrape it off, you can do what you need to do. Paint's a bit more forgiving in that respect. to work this guy in here. Keep forgetting that I don't need to be on the very edge of the pad. That's where I keep trying to put myself. Can really be wherever we want on this thing right now. Just pull up or grab my sketchbook. Alright, so I just need to get this background line in here. And I have a larger version of that in front of, well, not technically in front of me, but close by. But, you know, in the end, it's our shrubbery. That's how we want our area to look. And uh, it doesn't really have to be identical to anything. And uh, I'm sure that this won't even look very much like the sketch that we did. It might look like a little something like it, but... out our tree a little bit more here on this side.
asking me what we can make happen over here. That's not a bad shape. It's not too bad at all. Uh, you know, take your time with it. We're, we're not in a huge rush to get to the end here. You definitely want to take your time when you've got your fingers all up in there if you're trying to hold something. So you don't uh, miss and uh, accidentally get yourself. That's why I do recommend the finger protectors. Um, it is still possible to stab into them, and you can still hit your finger through them, but it slows down the velocity. I mean, a lot of times you'll just glance off of it, but I have hit it just right or hit it like right in the seam and I've gone through it. Um, it does hurt, but I've been lucky where I've only had um, like a pinprick on my finger from it. Um, these would definitely keep it from going all the way through your finger. Highly recommend them, especially if you're doing um, figurine work, where your fingers are going to definitely be in the way more, because you're using your one hand to try to stabilize and um, hold your critter in place. So this this is not necessarily an art form for the younger crowd, um, unless, you know, they're mature enough to understand these hurt, these are a tool, these are not a toy. Um, and even then it would still be absolutely um, adult supervision, but I don't know if I would let anyone younger than uh, like 13 or so do this, but even then, I mean, you'd have to know the person, I suppose. I know everybody's different. have to be real, real careful. Because these needles are no joke. You know, there's a couple different sizes in these that you can get. Um, I'm not sure the exact diameter on the one that I'm using because the toolkit I got just said small, medium, or large on the um, on the vials that the needles came shipped in. And I don't remember seeing anything in the paperwork with them about what gauge they were. Sorry, my nose is itching like crazy. Um, so I don't know. All I know is that it's small. I'm using the small needle that came in the toolkit I got. I actually tried using the, I think the medium or maybe the large. I tried using one of the other sizes and uh, it really made my hand tired really fast. And, um, I've heard some people say that the tighter the weave of fabric that you're using, um, the smaller gauge needle you want to go with anyway. So, just so it has a easier time of getting into the fibers of the uh, 
fabric and pushing the fluff through. I mean, the back looks pretty. The back probably looks more like what it should be looking like on the front, but uh, you know, whatever. I right, need a little bit more of our hunter green. So, th like I said, this is acrylic yarn. Um, I pre-fluff all of my colors when I get them and uh, make sure they have a, a ziploc assigned to them. And uh, I put the little UPC bar in there with the name of the color in case I need to order more of it. I mean, I know I won't get that dye lot, but hopefully I won't run out in the middle of working on something. But uh, it's just easier to have everything pre-fluffed and then just do refills as I need them. Alright, I think... I know his tree is a little bit taller there, but this might be as tall as we take the shrubbery on this side. We've got this middle framed out, and I really did want to leave some extra space in there of our sky. Alright, so I'm just making sure everybody's getting attached here. Alright, so this shade that I'm using right now is from the uh, Big Twist Value line. Um, from Joanne Fabrics. It's their in-house brand label. Alright. Now. Oh, we're not quite done. I forgot we need to bring this down a little bit further. I was like, oh, we're done with that color. No, not quite. <laughs> not quite. Alright, so we want to start to... Sorry if you're new here, we live on a busy road, so there's always a fair amount of traffic noise. Not much I can do about that, sorry. Alright, so let's work on adding a little bit more um, length to this. I might advance the tutorial just a little bit, just so I can see how much of this we need to fill in, because we can come back and do the trees. So there's a pathway in here that kind of curves around a little bit. I didn't draw that in yet. I think it stops on this line. Let me double check here. Okay, so this should probably be a little bit higher, right? Um, no, he has... Oh, we're in an ad. Hold on. Let me drop that because it's not one I can skip. That was an odd commercial that just popped up there. Okay, so yeah, I had it a little bit thinner. It should probably be a little bit higher. Um, now, he has it very yellow ochre up into here. Um, I still think we kind of probably want a bit of this color in here as our base. If nothing else, to just help um, get some shadows across. So, I 
let me bump it back to where we were. We're about in there. Just to um, kind of help things along a bit. I do want to probably keep that going a little bit more across the edge here. Let's peel that up. And we'll work on bringing that across into there. Now it doesn't have to be perfectly Right in through here because we're gonna have other stuff coming in so it's gonna be all right I mean we want to try to keep it as straight as we can out that way with me but you know as long as we're not like doing hard diagonals around here at right now then we're we're okay okay. you know I'd like that a little more filled in there personally just so we can uh, in there. I really don't want that much purple showing through towards the bottom. Like up in here it's fine, but down in here we're going to be closer to the ground. And some of that I'll probably be able to fill in with the other top shades that are going to come in over this, but... Right now, just wanted to get a little bit more of this down, and then we'll and 
move on to the other side here. Tell if I'm hearing sirens in the background, neighborhood, whatever dogs or something, or if it's people. I keep swearing I'm hearing something. And it's a little distracting. gonna have to come back in with a bit more of this after we get this um, section filled in with the colors and stuff because he's got that very yellow in through here and I feel like we're gonna end up needing to at least base coat this in um, in the dark green because that's that's a lot of that shade and um, I know he's trying to like get that it's like yellow in sunlight and stuff but at the same time I don't think it's gonna look right if we leave it all up to two colors it's gonna look very yellow and be very distracting for um, how we're gonna have to do it. So, I think we'll end up coming back in with a bit more of this. As things progress here. But that's okay, we can take it a little bit at a time. to slightly be thinking a few steps ahead, mostly for planning purposes, but like placement and stuff, because we can't just do a, what, what does Bob call it, a cabin, cabinectomy? We can't just uh, scrape this off be a lot more involved. I mean, you might be able to pull some of it off with a seam ripper, but that's a little more than I want to get involved with because I don't know if we would um, grab the underfelt here, our base, and that would probably complicate matters a bit. A bit more than I want it to be, so. It's a lot easier to add. Cause, I mean, if you can't get it off, then you're just gonna have to layer it up, and then you're putting a lot of layers of fluff on there. Well, I did order my dowel rods for the other piece to finish it. To, um,. To attach the hanger so we don't have to worry so much about fitting it into a frame. And we'll see how that goes. I don't think that I think it's gonna be another week before it gets here. The shipping was not the best on there. I mean, I'm a bit more used to um, 
Amazon's shipping speeds than uh, anybody else, I guess. But uh, Amazon didn't come through for me on this one, not for what I wanted, specifically. Alright, so now, um, let's, let me see if we can back the tutorial up just a little bit. Okay, so that's about where we left off. I know he's down a little bit further, but we'll, we'll take care of that in a minute. So he's going to start putting in some tree trunks here. And I know this is very dark. Um, oh boy. <coughs> Excuse me. Of course we're going to start sneezing now. Of course. bit of that, that. I can't tell. Did that tree, did he highlight that? Okay, so he didn't put a whole lot of tree trunks in. Um, so then he's gonna kind of go back and highlight stuff. That might just be the glare of the light, because I didn't see him necessarily mix a highlight color. Alright. Well, you know what? Let's let him go a little bit and finish highlighting these trees, so we have a better idea. Now, he, like, did, like, a yellowy sap green, um... We might like grab our our lime and our spring green are really close to each other, or our light green. Um, I might take a quick look at the little bundles that we have. Alright, so then he brings like some grassy stuff down. do like a mixture of like our lime green and our yellow. I mean compared to the two, the, the light green is probably a little bit darker. So I mean that might be what we want in here instead. <laughs> now, I didn't start out with like a reddish brown or anything on this in the background because it just didn't quite. feel like that's where we want it to be, just yet. Yeah, so he's got like some yellow ochre in here, some cat yellow, okay. If I could get a shot of this with, see they're doing this three quarter thing and that's like really not helpful. Um, they're only like doing the head-on shots when his arm is in the way, and I'd really like a head-on shot. Um, with his arm not in the way, like a slightly pulled back head-on shot, so we can get a better idea of the placement of things. 
Alright, so this is our brown. It's going to be a little bit hard to see him on our green at the moment. But just hang in there with me, okay? As we start to get our tree trunks and stuff put in. It should uh, be a little bit more visible. All right, so we were gonna maybe take, where do we want this guy to be? Now he looks like he's kind of coming through like this dark spot here. It kind of looks like there's some purple on either side of this guy. As he's coming down, I'm just twisting this a little bit just to A, get him. little bit more under control. And a little bit easier to uh, get tapped down into here. Now a lot of this will probably get covered as we bring in our other colors here, but give me one second you guys. I'm gonna mute here. I gotta blow my nose something awful. Ooh, okay, sorry about that. Put the finger doodles back on. Right. Okay, so now let's see what we can do here. I think I'm gonna give him he looked like he had a second um, trunk kind of coming off of him a little bit in here. So, let's see about adding that in. Like, he really kind of banished this guy with all of the leaves that he put on him. in the end, but say, all right, well, we'll add them in. Might as well, I guess.
that one hard to see tree trunk. Um, I think he added like another one. He didn't add many. Not really. There's like another one a little bit. Where is it? Sorry, it's hard to twist this with the finger guys on. Where was it? I'd say maybe here ish. have all that many this time, which is a little surprising. Because usually he's real big on adding the tree trunks everywhere, but I think he realized that the background wasn't going to be all that... Uh, visible when all is said and done. Alright, so I'm going to add another tree trunky guy over here. as we can there. Now you can just trim that if you prefer. Or you can just kind of fold it up and uh, work it in on top of the other stuff that you've already done there. going to be up to you. I mean, I know it's a little hard to see because of the darkness, but it is there. Alright, so. Just kind of rolling this into a fiber sneak, if you will. guy's kind of just hanging out up in here. He doesn't have a whole lot visible on him. He's definitely kind of sitting over top of these colors here. You want to make sure that you're getting all these guys attached really good. But sometimes that might take a pass or two. Sometimes you'll get a section that just wants to be a little bit stubborn. Alright. 
fill that in a little bit, but that's okay. We can come back over that in just a second and clean that up. So I'm not going to worry too much if my edges are a little weird because we're going to, you know, sandwich the dowel rods in between and we're going to trim up whatever would be hanging out. So, And then these sides will be cut as straight as we can. These might get a little bit more wobbly as we go, but we'll deal with that when we get there. use too much buttercup in this background. I think the buttercup comes into play a little bit more in through here, so we might hold off on buttercup for right now. For right now. And uh -oh. we might still use the lime green here. He did kind of hit this with a bit more of like the yellow ochre color. Now the yellow ochre color is probably a little bit more muted than this. Um, but I think I grabbed the wrong mustard yellow when I was grabbing the fluff off the wall. And because uh, I have two mustard yellow colors. And that's okay. One's a little bit brighter than the other one. Um, I didn't realize it at first. So this is the one that we used in the background. I think we'll just keep going with this one then. Um, just so we're not introducing another same color kind of deal. Alright, so I'm gonna really thin this out. And I know that looks really thick on there at the moment, but um, with this stuff, as you tap it in, it becomes a lot more spider webby when you've got it this thin. So the under color should be on just scraping the surface there. Um, the undercolor should shine through a bit and this will take us a couple of passes here. To uh, no doubt get this worked in. We're definitely going to have to add more layers to this, but we don't want it to be completely um, solid and overpowering. We do want a little bit of that darker shadow definitely peeking through there. Remember, less is more with this when you're starting out, at least I think, as, unless you're doing like a, a solid background or something. And I kind of want it to be in a little bit of a circular like motion just to kind of give it that tree limb feel like the way the leaves are sitting up in there I 
but you know if you want to put it in a different way that's up to you this is just what I'm trying to do for it, get some yellow-ish in there, and it's going to look a little different than his because his green was a bit more on the brown side, I just, I didn't really have a green that was going to do that, so I just sort of change the plan up a little bit, and that's okay. So we come back in with a little bit more of this, just to kind of lay that into there. So it was a little thin in that spot, it felt like. but that might be all right. So I'm just trying to stay within my boundary at the top. I mean, it can be okay if it goes a little out of it, but I am personally trying to stay within that as best as I can. kind of see our tree branch here starting to appear out of the darkness a little bit, a little bit. Nothing super crazy. Again, I'm going with the less is more approach on the trees to start out with slowly work on it. And that get your colors built up in there.
so it's kind of tucked into here. Now when you're going with the smaller amounts, you are going to have to be a little bit more careful about making sure that you're fully attached. You're going to have a lot more wispy pieces, flyaways kind of hanging about. You can just rub your hand over and if it's moving around then you probably missed attaching in a couple of spots. But we're not looking too bad there. We're starting to take a bit more shape. Now I might come in and add a little bit of our um, buttercup in. Just a little bit on the top of that, maybe just a, you know, for some highlighty purposes, it wouldn't be very, very much. Wouldn't be very much at all. Worked into here. Oh, that's a little bright there. I think we added a little too much in that spot. We got a little, a little carried away. That's all right though. We'll get it brought back in. <laughs> now I do kind of feel like maybe I should have put a little bit of this down before we put the trunk in, but A little late for that now, but uh, if we have to relay the trunk in again in a couple spots, then that's what we'll do, but we'll see. What we can uh, it to happen in here. I can see I've got so much fiber in here. I'm starting to, uh, this is starting to make a hard crease there. That was kind of interesting. Like a, a hard indent. using very much of this at the moment. 
but let me go too too crazy. I do want to come off the edge of the green a little bit in a couple of spots though just so we're not quite constantly within that green just so it doesn't look like a full on like outliney thing to figure out how we're gonna work the bottom of this here because yeah we might need to come back in and uh, redo part of this trunk here we'll see I know what it feels like is going to have to happen. Just because of how we did it. Or how I did it. Take you all the way down to the bottom area here. Uh, we might not need to fully redo that trunk. Maybe not. Maybe not. part of that be visible there. So we're gonna pop this up into here. And you can cover this up now. A bit. Big shrubbery guy back in here. 
Oh, hey, it's a taco raid. How's taco? It's been a minute. Thanks for the raid, appreciate it. Hi, taco friends. And you see, we do games and during the week, and usually art on the weekend. Today we are working on our needle felting along with Bob Ross, where we are working our way through one of his seasons of The Joy of Painting, season three right now to be specific. And uh, instead of using paint, we are trying to needle felt along. Doesn't quite exactly always look what look like uh, what he's done, but uh, you know, give it a valiant try. You're alright, you just feel ucky? Yeah, I feel the same way. My allergies are kicking my ass. And uh, usually if it goes on for too long, then it starts to turn into a head cold, which is what it feels like it's starting to do the past couple of days. I've been like non-stop stuffy and all kinds of snotty and just... Like, I don't feel like... It's hard to explain. I feel kind of shitty, but at the same time, not shitty enough not to do anything. So, I've just been kind of trying to uh, push through and get some stuff done. So what kind of ucky do you not feel? Just a general ucky? Pretty cold, ucky, allergy, ucky. Just a general ucky. I'm excited for Diablo 4. June can't get here fast enough. I only did one of the beta weekends and then um, we didn't do any more because we saw what we needed to see and we're trying to um, keep the rest of it um, not really a surprise but just not burn out on just the weekends when it is up. We saw that we're, we're okay with being able to play it. We both can play it. Russell said it felt like a, more of a horror game this time. To him at least, it felt like old school Diablo. And you got to 20 so you get the cosmetic wolf backpack. Oh nice, I didn't realize that was a thing. Very nice. Ooh. Ended up getting a little bit of a late start today. I was about half hour late starting stream today because I was just so slow getting up and going. Because uh, I don't remember what time I laid down, but uh, I know it was early for me. And um, Zuzu actually came in and hopped up with me, which surprised me because he usually lays with my mom. Sometimes he won't come in to lay with me till like 6 a.m. or something when she gets up. Or if a cat steps on him and upsets him. Because he gets under the blankets and the cats will jump up on the bed and then they step on him because they don't realize he's there or they do realize he's there and they don't give a shit. Um, either one is entirely possible. But uh, he came in with me early. I remembered falling asleep for like maybe an hour maybe an hour and a half at the absolute most and then woke up just so stuffy. 
couldn't breathe and I'm like what is happening and then I started sneezing and I'm like oh good good this is what we need and um and then I really couldn't breathe so I'm like right so we need to get up I had to go to the bathroom anyway and then I took some allergy medicine I'm like I'm gonna regret this and uh I did because it knocked me on my ass and I don't think I woke up until like 1 30 a little after 1 30 and uh took me a few minutes to drag my ass out of bed and then I wanted to make tea and I'd go to the bathroom and start setting stuff up and I was just real slow getting going and by the time I sat down to start things up I was like oh wait how did it get to be that late or that fast and I was like well I guess it really wasn't that fast I guess I was kind of dragging my feet to get going I know I'm not appreciating this cold snap that we had. I mean, I know it's April, and April can be funny with uh, temperatures and stuff, but um, not not really appreciating it all that much here. We were under a freeze watch last night. I was like, oh, good, good. Hopefully the seeds weren't too established yet that we planted, and it won't get them. I had one thing that was kind of already sprouted. I don't know how that did yet. I haven't really had the chance to check on it yet. Just pulling out some, some lime green, I believe the shade is called. This is from Paintbox. This stuff's a little bit silkier and a little bit shinier. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of that just to kinda break up some of our mustard color here. So I think I'm going to have to switch off of the allergy medicine. I'm like, oh, my knee is not happy today. And uh, switch into uh, like Dayquil or something because I do know if I take the allergy medicine too much, and I haven't even really had a, a full dose anytime I've taken it, um, I can start to, things can start to take a turn. <laughs> So I might have to stop using that though. It didn't really feel like it was doing that much for me. I mean, it maybe made my eyes not itch as much. But I never really felt <coughs> any less, <coughs> excuse me. Like something stuck in my throat. Um, I never really felt any less stuffy. Whew. What is the temperature right now? 59. So it's not that bad, but we were like almost in the 80s for a week. And then last night it got so cold I had to close the window. It just feels a little too chilly. Like the heat was running last night and everything. A little bit of a shock after it had been so warm for a few days that we had like all of the fans running. It's a couple of days it was pretty pretty warm in here. It's 
weird that we are like actually having a spring this time. I don't think we really had spring last year. Maybe that's why I don't remember my allergies being quite this bad last year. We just had such a roller coaster with temperatures. It's been wild. So I'm being real, real stingy with this lime green. Just I don't want it to completely make our mustard color disappear. I do just kind of want to melt it in there with it. That's not bad. Alright, who's bugging ya? Was it Momo? He was, yeah. It hadn't been that long. I was gonna say, if I need to take him, I will. Alright. So I just kinda wanna... Just like a little bit more of a... Another shade in here, so it's kinda hard to see. As we're putting it in. little bit thinner. I just want to give it just a little kiss of something else in here. Maybe... I think this was supposed to be either an early spring time scene or maybe like a an early autumn one. I'm not sure what he was doing with this one, but we'll see about just kind of lightly adding those colors in. So are you still working on challengers or did you take a break? Working on what? Talking to Taco. Oh, sorry. It's okay. At least I think Taco's still here. Taco may have left. Which is perfectly fine. Well, Taco might still be here, I'm not sure. You have a tiny bit, just balls deep in other games? Yeah, I know that one. I'm not even playing well at all right now. I can't. Number one, didn't really have the money to keep the um, sub going. Number two, um, I can't really play Dragonflight. It's... Um, a lot of it is dragon riding. So I haven't even, I wasn't even able to get a regular character through the expansion because so many quests involve the dragon riding. And it was pissing me off because I didn't want to have to depend on Russell feeling up to doing those quests to get them done and then I was missing the quests stuff happening with it you know and um, it just it was frustrating me to no end because everything was so tied into the dragon riding and it was giving me migraines every time I tried to do it no matter what options I was selecting or unselecting that uh, I just kind of gave up I was like, yeah, I can't. Can't do it anymore. I mean, that was a bit of a bummer. Yeah, that, that looks a little bit better with the lime kind of melted in there a little bit. And uh, I stepped back from doing all of the WoW challenge things, so I'm still in the Discord as a mod, but I'm not doing any of the website work now. Because I'm not sure yet um, 
if I'm gonna have to go back to work so I didn't want to be tied down into that and stuff so I had originally stepped back because A, I didn't know if I was going to have to go back to work soon, and B, um, we thought that um, we're going to have to put more, um, more time into helping my dad, but uh, things, things turned really fast there, so, um, you know. And now that I haven't had to do it, I'm like, oh, this is what it's like to not have to be tied down to that. It's been a while, so um, I've just been kind of working on my own stuff. It uh, kind of sort of got neglected. And uh, working on other projects. as I have time. But uh, yeah, we've been kind of doing a bit of Planet Zoo. Um, been uh, trying out Dinkum, which has been kind of fun. different farming sim with like an Australia Outback theme to it. That's been cute so far. Been enjoying that. Um, we've been having fun exploring Coral Island. And uh content updates and stuff. Speaking of, there should be another content update coming in May from what I was seeing. I'm not all sure what that's going to involve. I haven't gotten an email yet about it, I don't think, um, just based on what I was seeing on the update menu in game. They do have a next update date roughly penciled in. on one of the load menus. Don't know if they're going to make that deadline or not, but that is in there. And um, just kind of wandering around and doing a little bit of art on the side and we might step back into Minecraft a little bit maybe don't know yet kind of thinking about it maybe we'll wait for the next update although I don't know what the next update's going to involve I need to look I think people were talking about the the 20 update or something, or the point twenty, or the 19 point, or the 20 point something. I think they're on 19 point something right now. But I lost all of my old saves, so when uh, the computer died, so we'll have to uh, start fresh. And I'll probably go regular survival and just turn off the mobs that give me the most trouble, which are the pillagers and the raids. They're the main reason why I was on Peaceful so much. I forgot that, uh, well that and I'm really bad at dodging creepers, but, um,
the uh, the raids were a bit obnoxious and the pillagers always kind of kicked my ass a bit and they would always happen before I had any kind of arsenal built up I'd have like a wooden sword I wouldn't even have a bow And here comes a raid, and I'm like, what is happening? Like, no, that's okay. We don't need to be doing that. But, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna bring this guy down a little bit. Can definitely feel our layers forming here because we're starting to get a little divity. That's okay. That'll happen. But, uh, yeah, so, now we're just kind of working on, uh, figuring stuff out here. We had to get some, we had to replace my computer on, ex well, we were planning on replacing it anyway, but, um, we had to emergency replace it faster than we had anticipated because the power source in the other one just died. It didn't quite go up in visible smoke, but I definitely smelled a burning smell of like burnt dust right after all of my screens went black and I was like, uh, what just happened? Well, that was not exactly a fun time. Not at all. been going through and trying to add stuff that I realize is missing as, it, as I realize it's missing but I switched uh, internet browsers so I couldn't even like import all of my bookmarks so now as I'm going along I'm like oh wait I'm missing this bookmark oh wait I'm missing that bookmark fun stuff and then going through all of my files that we did manage to salvage and figuring out what I need to keep and what I don't need to keep quite a few text files because uh, I had to reacquire um, Office Libra, Libre, I don't know how the fuck you're supposed to pronounce it. Um, and we, th I thought we had transferred some of those text files over that I had on there, except when I was in there trying to pull up the old ones it said it was a desktop shortcut and then it couldn't find the file and I was like okay so I don't know if those files still exist <laughs> they, they might not so it's kind of a good thing I'm not doing the WoW Challenges website stuff anymore because uh, I would have been real damn upset having to redo my templates that I made for um, I mean I think I put them in the in the backup drive that Lita and I had for all the website stuff but it just it wouldn't have been fun 
would have been a bit of a pain in the ass. But nope, just kind of figuring out what to do with my free time now. I don't know, I've been in a weird place because it's like I'm not really playing WoW right now because I can't. Like, physically can't. And, uh, so it feels weird still being a mod in the Discord. I'm not really playing right now, so some of the questions I really can't answer anymore. we got going on. There's a couple of games still on my wish list that I'm kind of wanting to see. There's a new one. Um, it's like a ranching, it's another ranching farm sim. That seems to be the category that uh, I seem to gravitate to. But it still doesn't have an early access release date yet, so I don't know. I think early access release date was for I think it said on Steam like third quarter of this year. Oh, what's third quarter? I think third quarter might be. Like July, August. Somewhere around in there. Fourth quarter is usually coming into um, Christmas. So fourth quarter might be um, like December, November, maybe October. So third quarter might be July, August, September, something like that. Gaming buddy gifted me grounded from your wish list. Oh, nice. Russell has that. He likes it. At least I think that's what it is. It's the ant game, right? Yeah, it's, it's the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a thing with bugs, so I can't play it with him. So, But uh, he, he enjoys that quite a bit. Quarters or three months, yeah. So. so I guess that would be July, August, September, October, November, December. So yeah, so maybe late summer. I'm hoping that they'll actually put it out because it feels like it's been on my wish list forever. Um, I'm still keeping an eye on Timberborn. I know we haven't revisited it recently, um, but there hasn't been all that much in the way of updates happening with it lately. Sorry, this fluff is really hard to see, this particular shade. And uh, it was kind of sticking to me as I was trying to pull out the shade here. Now I've got a piece of it sitting in my mustard um, color bluff there. Blob. But, um,. I, haven't, I don't have too much on my, my wish list. They're kind of all the same. A friend gifted me... Um, oh, what the fuck was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. January, February, March, and April, so second quarter. So yeah, we'd be in second quarter right now, so hopefully we'll see some an, movement on that soon. Um... A friend gifted me um, a copy of, oh, what the fuck was it called? Founder's Fortune? Yes. Um, they had gotten it. Uh, I think they were still signed up for Humble Bundle. Um, they'd gotten it from there, and I guess they really didn't want to play it or whatever. Um, it's not his kind of game. Yeah, it's a little slow for him. And, uh... I was intrigued and I was like, alright, sure, I'll, I'll take it. Um, 
I've kind of hit a mental roadblock with it, like only 20 minutes in, and 20 minutes was spent trying to figure out how to play. Um, it's kind of like RimWorld meets... I don't know, it is kind of RimWorld-esque, but also kind of like... I, I don't know, because you can farm in RimWorld, but that's not like your main purpose. Um, yeah, I would say that's like the worst game you could possibly try to compare it to. Yeah, I don't know what I would compare it to, it's but... It's like Dinkum, but without the fucking tutorial. Yeah, it doesn't tell you how to play. Like, they just kind of... Like, okay, you're in. Like, you can kind of pick traits and mess with the traits for your characters, but... I'm like, okay, now what? And then... They... You load in and you're on a map... I couldn't find a tutorial option anywhere and they kind of give you a tutorial but it's also kind of half-assed and where it doesn't make sense to me so like your characters have or your townspeople have like daily wants and wishes and you kind of have to keep their morale up and completing those keeps them happy and then it's like oh this and then this thing pops up about, oh, you need to make one of these, which was some kind of, like, light tower, so that more people will migrate to your settlement. And I'm like, okay, we just loaded into the game. Uh, I don't really think we're ready for more people, but okay. And, uh... But then it didn't tell you how to build it. Like, they showed you where it was in the menu, but I'm like, okay, well, do I need to gather the supplies first, or do they just go gather them themselves? And there was a thing in there about, um, oh, well, you know, this is for signing somebody this job, and this is for signing someone that, that job, so it kind of felt a little bit, like, timberborn in that respect, but then, um... You know, and signing jobs and priority stacks, and I'm like, okay. And then the one guy's like, I really want a bed. And I'm like, okay, well, how do we make that? And then there was a thing that you could make a sleeping bag or a bedroll or something. I'm like, okay. So I clicked that, and he finally made it. He's like, he really wants a spot to call his own. I'm like, he just slept there. He doesn't own it. And then there was like an arrow pointing to him. Or pointing to the bed and then pointing to him and I'm like so arrows pointing at the bed okay I clicked on that now it's pointing to him so I clicked on him and I'm like I don't understand like it wasn't explaining oh left click right click it was just like there you go and I'm like it was hand holding without the explanation I'm like I don't understand it took me 20 minutes to figure out how to assign a bed roll to him. And I'm like, this is just not fun. <laughs> this is not making my uh, my will to want to play this uh, keep going. So, um, yeah, right. So I kind of kind of gave up on that guy. I was like, yeah, all right. Um, maybe we'll revisit this later. But, uh. It was not... I have to see if that was even on my wish list. If it is, I need to make sure it's been taken off of there. I mean, I, he, it was a Steam code, so I guess if it was, it would have been. But it was um, weird. Like, I have a couple of other similar kind of games. Like, um, the fuck was it? <sighs> I th was it Going Medieval? I don't... Something something like that, like a city builder, but like older. Um, it wasn't Foundation itself. I have played Foundation itself. This this was worse than that. Like, I was just like, oh boy. Alright. So I was thinking about working this into here. We've got like this tree guy here. We might have to redo the trunk on this one. 
he's kind of hard to see in there. I mean, we got this guy stood out pretty good. This one uh, might be a little more difficult. I might have to redo the trunk there because you can't even really see him in the camera. But, um, so we got our... Today we ended up getting all of our background trees in. Our background shadows in. And we got our tree trunks in even though you can't really see this one, this one, or this one. Maybe you can. Well, we'll, we'll bring it up a little bit closer. You can kind of see it a little bit better now. If I can get that, uh, okay, about there. So, um, and we started to put in the color of our background trees in here. I don't want to put too much color in here. Um, we might just stick with these same two shades and variate them more green or more mustard um, along and through here. We might come back in and add just the tiniest touch of buttercup yellow, which would be our brighter yellow, but I might not because um, just to help keep these two, uh, this plane separate from the next one that's coming in. So the next one that's coming in is going to be more of like a mustard heavy color. Um, but I kind of am thinking I'm going to, after we get this section finished, and we probably, we might get close to finishing this section tomorrow, we'll see. Um, after we get this done, I think I want to come back in with the hunter green and um, maybe fill into about, eh, I want this to be a little bit thicker, so maybe to about here-ish. Um, we have to put in our, our road that's going to come in through here. I don't know, maybe we'll leave that about there. We'll, we'll see, we'll see. Um, but I think I want that in here more, and then we'll come back over with the um, the mustard and the buttercup. And we'll get um, a good amount of the mustard covering most of the dark green in here. Uh, I still want a little bit to, to pop through, just a teeny bit. Um, but I think if we try to do all mustard and then try to do the buttercup on top of it, it's, it's not going to look right. So... Um, I think we'll keep going with this color in here. We're going to be using a lot of this color because then we've got a full dark section um, down in here. But I think that's where we're going to go with this. So that's the plan for right now. Um, so we'll pick up tomorrow. Hopefully I'll be on time to start tomorrow. Um, I'll try to get up as soon as I can tomorrow so we can make up some more time. So we didn't have that much time to work on this today because um, I have that hard stop time where I need to go make dinner for my mom. Um, I doubt I'll be back later tonight because I'm kind of wiped out and I really need to get some video editing done. I've not been uh, working on that and I need to. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll pause that there for now. I don't know if anybody I know is doing anything at the moment. Let me double check. And we'll see here. Let's see doesn't look like it. Yeah, so we'll just, we'll just um, pause it there. So I hope you have fun with Grounded Taco. Thanks for popping in. Thanks for the raid. I appreciate it. Um, I hope to see you guys tomorrow where we'll pick back up with this. Um, hopefully. And um, you guys hope that your weekend finishes out well. I hope you feel better, Taco. And um, hope the uckies go away. And I will see everybody tomorrow. So until next time, you guys have a good one.